Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Tuesday, January 30, 2024. I pray that you are all doing well. I pray that you will have a wonderful day today and may the Lord give you peace and may you be encouraged and may you be blessed as you go throughout the day. Our reading today comes to us from Matthew chapter 7, reading verses 15 to 29. It says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raven wolves. 16 says, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Verse 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. 20. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Verse 22 Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? 23 And then I will profess Unto them I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 24. The, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which build his house upon a rock. 25. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Verse 26 And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and do them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. 27 And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell and great was the fall of it. Verse 28, And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. 29 and last, For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And I say, Amen. We give God thanks this morning again for his word. A beautiful reminder to us that God is our shepherd and that we should follow his leading and his directives. We are reminded that we should beware of false prophets. And how can we identify a false prophet? We can identify a false prophet by the fruits that they bear. And how will we know what type of fruit they should bear? by studying the word of God. Amen. So it's by knowing the word of God and knowing God's voice that we will be able to identify those false prophets and false doctrines. So it doesn't matter if they come in clothed in sheep clothing. It won't be enough to fool us or to fool anybody that is wrapped up and tangle up with Jesus because you'll be able to spot error. The word of God says not everyone who says Lord, Lord will make it to heaven. So not because you and I go to church every Saturday or every day means that we are saved. Going to church is not a guarantee. We are saved through grace. The Bible says for by grace we are saved and it is the gift of God. It is about obedience. So we need to 
do what the Lord asks us to do. We need to follow His guidelines. Follow His precepts. Don't do our own thing. Don't act selfishly because that is not going to get us anywhere. Okay? And so, yes, we go to church every Saturday and we go to church in the week. But when you look at our lifestyle, it doesn't speak and testify to the fact that we are walking with Christ. In fact, sometimes folks cannot even tell that we are Christian because we are a totally different person when we're at work, when we're at school, when we are doing our own thing. And Christianity is not something that you take on today and you put on tomorrow or you put it on every Saturday or, and then you just take it off the other days. No, it's a lifestyle. It's something you wear all the time, just like your skin. You don't take off your skin and, and then put it on tomorrow. No, you always have on your skin because it's a part of you. Amen. And so if we profess to be Christian, then we need to conduct ourselves as Christian. We need to bear the fruits of the spirit. We need to be loving. We need to be kind. We need to be forgiving. And the list goes on. Let us know that God, while he came to save humanity, Satan has a way of drawing our attention from his saving grace to a destructive path. So let us be mindful of that. Now, he gives the illustration of the man building his house upon the rock. And who is this rock? Jesus. So if your foundation is Jesus, it doesn't matter what obstacle Satan may put in your path, you will never fall because Jesus is an unmovable foundation. It cannot be moved. So the wind will come, the, the flood will come, the fire will come, whatever your crucible, whatever Satan throws at you, you don't need to fear. Just stay in the house. Stay on that foundation and you will be okay. But if you don't build on that solid rock, if your foundation is sand, now if you build on your own confidence, if you build on your own selfishness, if you build on the things of this world, all its vanities, then those won't be able to keep you when trouble come. So when you are in a crisis, it doesn't matter how much things you have. It doesn't matter if you are rich or you are poor, whatever. Once your foundation is not Jesus, you won't be able to stand in troubled times. And so let us build on the rock of Jesus as we continue to do the Lord's will, as we continue to walk in his righteousness, may we humble ourselves. May we allow his spirit to lead us. May we keep our eyes open so that we are not deceived. Do not allow anyone to lead you astray or to push you off the path of righteousness. But stay the course. Keep your eyes on Christ. And if you do that, then surely one day you will see his face and not only see his face, but you and I will be able to go home to live with him eternity in eternity. God bless you and have a wonderful rest of the day. Amen.